Welcome back to the RDF channel and today's content is all about rebuilding Arsenal in Football Manager 2021. The way we're going to do this is make some signings, sell some deadwood, set a nice tactic and then simulate three seasons to see if we can successfully rebuild Arsenal to a competing side once again. With the signings to keep things from not going out of control, we're probably only going to make around 3 signings a season and after each season we'll be looking back to see how that season went. Before we get stuck into things though, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you like this video, you can share it as well, that would help out a lot. Also down in the comments, let me know if you want me to carry on with this type of content or if you have any other content recommendations. If you like to watch free football, then you better check this out. One Football and the RDF Tactics channel have chosen to collab once again. Downloading this app would help this channel out in many ways, but why exactly should you download it? The One Football app is an excellent app for football fans. It's the best place to check recent news, legally watch matches, yes, for free, and you can follow your team and be notified when something major happens. It's also great to check out the latest transfer rumours and if you're like me, you don't want to miss out on any rumours, transfer season can be fun. Once all the league starts up as well, it's a great app to check statistics. This channel creates recreations, using the OneFootball app helps grab vital stats but also you will have access to team lineups before the football match starts. This is a great app if you want to follow football around the world or get the latest news just on your team. So. Make sure you try it out but it does also help this channel out a lot and gives it many great opportunities to grow. So give it a go and I promise you won't regret it. So here we are, the date is at the 12th of September 2020 which means we're at the very first game of the new Premier League season so what we're going to do now is have a look at some of the signings that I've made, some of the players that I've sold as well, I've also signed some staff as I want some players to develop so we're going to have a look at some of the signings before looking at the tactic. These signings all the way down to Joel Idaho were made before I arrived. The first signing that I've made was Gabriel Menino, a central midfielder but who can also play at right back. Hector Bellerin has some nice cover at the right back position. He's very good on the ball, he's very talented, only 19 years of age so he should be able to develop. His current ability is on 3 stars but potentially he can rise to 5 star. Hopefully we get to see that and hopefully he turns out to be a very good signing for Arsenal and we did snap him up for 20 million at the start of the season. And our second signing is someone that Arsenal have been linked with in real life is Hossam Awa, a central midfielder who can also play in attacking midfield which likely Arsenal will play him in Football Manager. I will be setting a 4-2-3-1 for Arsenal as well so something that they use in real life. Hossam Awa is a real life target as well but on Football Manager he was fairly expensive. He cost Arsenal around 54 million pound but is he going to be worth it we will find out at the end of the season and the outgoings was Said Klasenac we sold him to Rons for around 6 million which can rise to 7.5 million we also sold Lucas Torreira to Juventus he's actually a decent player on Football Manager but we don't really want him around the squad we did let Joe Willett go but he is only on loan to Brighton we didn't sell him in real life he's actually gone to Newcastle as we speak these transfer updates are not that up to date so our last piece of business was letting Joe Willett go out on loan to Brighton but now we're going to have a look at the tactic that we are going to be using throughout this whole simulation. Here is the 4-2-3-1 that I've built for Arsenal as we can see it is called RDS Arsenal Real Build. For the team instructions it's the positive mentality and you can see all the instructions here without me having to go through all of them as this is not a tactic video. Hopefully this gives us a very good chance to compete or make Arsenal a competing side in Football Manager. I do think that we should look at the staff that we brought in so we have RDF Tactics Test which is me kind of the assistant manager as we're going to be simulating this. We brought in Steve Bold as a coach as our defending coach, we brought in Anthony Colbert as our fitness coach. What other coaches did we bring in? 
I think that's it for the start. We've only brought in those two coaches, Steve Bold and Anthony Colbert, who are actually ex Arsenal staff as well. As we can see, Mikel Arteta got sacked as well. Hopefully, we can do a better job. This is what the first season team is going to look like. So, we have our backup keeper, we have Bernd Leno in goal, Gabriel Holden, Ben White, and Mari as our mainstay centre backs. We do have Bellerin, Gabriel Menino, Chambers can play fullback, Maitland Niles can play fullback as well. We have Cedric, Kirantini, and Tavares all as our fullbacks. In central midfield, we have Mohamed El Nene, the new sign in Lakonga, Thomas Partey, and Granite Shaka. And then our attacking players, we have some nice attacking players Saka, William, Martinelli, Reese Nelson, Hossam Owa, Nicholas Pepe, Emil Smith Rowe, Eddie Nketiah, who we may or may not sell next season, depends how he develops. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, and then lastly, Alexandra Lacazette. This is the team that we are going to be using in the first season. Now we are going to simulate the whole of the first season. See how Arsenal got on. By the way, do have a database update as well. You can see Brentford are in the Premiership, Norwich are in the Premiership as well. That means Arsenal are not in any European competition. First season should be a breeze, just focus on the Premier League, try and get some European football for next season, hopefully we can do better next season, third season or by third season we have built a very good team. Let's simulate season one, see how Arsenal got on and I will see you in a bit. So here we are, season one is complete, maybe no European football has actually helped Arsenal here. Whatever's happened, Arsenal have won the Premier League. The top goal scorer for Arsenal this season was Alexandre Lacazette with 19 goals. The highest average rated player, so probably the best player for Arsenal this season was Hassam Awa. He's got the most assists as well, 21 assists in all competitions I believe. The best pass completion goes to Gabriel with 96%. The most man of the match awards is Hassam Awa again. And the most yellow cards, Kieran Tierney and Ben White. We scored 89 Premier League goals, which is the best. We conceded 31, which is the third best, getting 77 yellow cards and two red cards. So we're going to have a look at the Premier League table. Arsenal won 30 of the 38 games. We drew three and only lost five. Well, only we lost five. Those five losses came against Wolves, Manchester City, Norwich, Leicester City, and also Manchester City again. We lost 6-0 away to Manchester City wow and still ended up winning the league we won the league by 10 points as well absolutely fantastic but we're going to look at the top goal scorers in the league Raul Jimenez scored 24 goals there is Lacazette with 19 goals Aubameyang scored 14 goals Hossam Awa got 19 assists in the Premier League there's Bakayo Saka my favourite player with 9 assists looking at the man of the match awards we have Hossam Awa 11 man of the match awards what a great signing he was for Arsenal he played the most key passes for the best pass completion we have Gabriel for the most tackles one Hector Bellerin and Kirantini both put in a shift for Arsenal now we can look at the other competitions how well did Arsenal do in other competitions in the FA Cup we got knocked out in the third round by Wigan in the Carabao Cup we got knocked out in the fourth round by Burnley in the Community Shield which we shouldn't have been a part of but we was and we came runners up we lost 3-0 to Liverpool rightly so Let's look at the squad, the top goal scorers in all competitions. We have Lacazette on 19, Aubameyang on 16, Saka scored 10 goals. Here we have Emil Smith Rowe on 8, Gabriel Martinelli on 6 and Gabriel Menino on 6 as well. With the assists we have Hossam Awa on 21, the only player that made double figures for assists. Something that I'm actually personally interested in at looking at is how some of these young players develop. So if we look at Emil Smith Rowe, he looks like a fantastic, fantastic talent. He's now a wonder kid. He's valued at £31 million. He's only earning 30 k He's probably due a new contract soon. His off the ball looks like it's gone up. His technique looks like it's gone up. That's Emil Smith Rowe. We can now look at Saka. If I can find him, I don't know why I'm struggling. There we are. Here is Saka. He doesn't look like he's improved much it doesn't really look so but this is Saka he played very well with an average rating of 7.2 
And lastly, I do want to look at our new signing, Gabriel Menino. He looks like he's developing a little bit. He now looks a little better, but he's still on those three stars. And his potential ability has gone down a little bit, but his value has shot up now to 42 million pound he's also got a brazil cap that's the first season all wrapped up we're gonna see how well arsenal can do in the premier league and the champions league in second season of course i'm going to make some signings so here's the second season signings for some reason it counts as the first season probably because i signed them in june but here are the second season signings number one gonzalo villa a new central midfielder a new deep line playmaker as well he looks a fantastic talent he's also a model citizen and the media describes him as a world-class midfielder exactly what arsenal need now for the champions league how much did we sign him for 49.5 million pound so he's fairly pricey but if we look at his attributes he does look like he can be worth it our second signing was Matthias Oliveira a backup left back to Kieran Tierney. I felt that we was fairly light in that area we do have players such as Maitland Niles and Tavares but on Football Manager they're just not good enough especially to compete and fight with Kieran Tierney for that left back space our last summer signing this season was Brenner a 21 year old striker he cost us around let me check it cost us around 17.5 million pound he is a backup player, someone to come in for Lacazette and Aubameyang as they are now aging. I think they're both over 30. It's time to look into the future now. And Eddie Nketiah just didn't develop nicely, not good enough anyway, to become eventually a number one striker. For the outgoings, this is who we sold if we look. Balogun went out on loan but we did manage to sell Eddie Nketiah for £21 million to Southampton. We sold Callum Chambers as well for £12.75 million. We sold Cedric to Leicester for £19 million and Reese Nelson also was sold for £10 million. So we did try and make some of our money back. We did spend £154 million over two summer windows. It was time to try and make that money back. I did try and make more money if we look at the squad. I tried to sell Lacazette which he just wasn't budging he is not leaving Mavro Parnas as well our center back he came back from loan he too was not leaving and I noticed Shaq is not there so I do think there's actually more outgoings if we check of course there is there's actually more outgoings El Nene has finally left as well for 13.25 million we sold Shaka to Leicester City for 16 million pound William went to Marseille and then we sold some youngsters in midfield we do have Lokonga now Partey and Villa and then our attacking players are Martinelli now Joe Willick is back from loan he developed nicely on loan as well so I did keep him we do have Hossam Awa, Nicholas Pepe, Emil Smith-Rowe, Aubameyang, Brenner and Lacazette this is the second season team we are now going to simulate the second season see how well Arsenal can do they did win the league in the first season they have to do a lot to try and top that but we're going to see how well they did at the end of the second season and here we are end of the second season Arsenal this time finished second in the Premier League second to Manchester City who finished on 96 points there was absolutely no catch in there for the player stats we have Brenner who was the top goal scorer he scored 39 goals in his debut season absolutely fantastic Hossam Awa the highest average rated player again and again 21 assists for Arsenal no, with the goal score though we scored 95 goals in the Premier League so more than last season but now was the second best in the Premier League and we conceded 23 goals so defensively we were better attacking wise we were better but we got less points on the table let's look at the Premier League we managed to win 26 games this time we drew way more than we did last year and we actually lost less games as well those three losses came away to Brentford away to Liverpool 4-1 so another heavy defeat and 1-0 away to Manchester City if we look at the top goal scorers in the Premier League we have Brenner number one 26 goals in the Premier League 
also have Saka there as well in the top 8. He came 6th with 15 goals in the Premier League. A very good return for Saka. For the assist, Messi with the most assist. He plays for Liverpool, an elite attacking midfielder. That's what football manager says. I think he's a GOAT. For the most assist, it's Messi. Hossam Awal with 13. He came 2nd again. And then Gabriel Menino came in 4th place with 10. But that's just the Premier League. We are in the Champions League, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Let's see how well Arsenal done in the other cup competitions. Absolutely amazing stuff. We won the Champions League. Arsenal won the Champions League. So we have to go to the schedule. We're going to filter out just the Champions League fixtures because we have to see how Arsenal got to the Champions League final. So in the group stage, we had Club Bruges, Seville and Lazio. A decent group stage. We came out of that group stage fairly comfortably probably topping that group did we yes we topped that group by a mile as well in the knockout stages we came against Bayern Munich we beat them 3-0 in both stages then we had Manchester City fairly more difficult we got through that stage fairly comfortable as well then we played Liverpool an absolutely fantastic team who also have Messi we knocked them out we drew 0-0 in the first leg but we beat them 2-1 at the Emirates Stadium and then in the final we beat Bayer Leverkusen 2-0 Hossam Awa scored in the 8th minute and Breno scored in the 67th, probably the two best Arsenal players. There we have it, Arsenal won the Champions League, we probably should just end this rebuild right now. See you later guys, peace out. Of course not. In the FA Cup we got knocked out in the 5th round by Brentford and we won the Carabao Cup and the Community Shield. So we won the double, technically a treble. If you want to count the community shield, I'm going to count it because I'm an Arsenal fan, so it all matters. We won the treble in the second season. Let's look at the squad stats. Who were the top goal scorers in all competitions? We have Brenner on 39 goals in 51 games. Saka scored 22 goals, so a very good return for him in 52 starts. Gabriel Martinelli scored 15 goals, Gabriel scored 15 goals, Emil Smith Rowe scored 13, and Hossam Auer scored 11. For the assists, this time we have more players in the double figures. We have Hossam Auer on 21, Gabriel Menino on 17, Saka on 13, and Emil Smith Rowe on 11. Again, once again, let's look at some of these youngsters. Emil Smith Rowe, he's just developing into a very, very nice attacking player. You can either play him as an inverted winger or you can play him as an advanced playmaker. Either way, we are using both. Next, we're going to look at Saka, who looks like he has developed a little bit actually from the last time we looked at him. His dribbling looks like it's gone up, maybe. I'm not sure actually. Something's gone up. His attributes look like they have risen. Let's check the progress. Let's check the form all time so his anticipation has gone up his strength has gone up that looks like it really i don't know it looks like more attributes have gone up either way Saka looks a fantastic player as well now valued at 39.5 million pound also we have gabriel menino who looks like he's developing into a very very good player now his current ability is at four stars his potential has gone back up to potentially five now valued at 65 million pound some Arsenal fans probably want to look at Albert Sambi Lokonga as well. He's valued at £60 million. He actually looks a decent player, someone that can be around the squad, not quite good enough to break in to the first team. Not quite, anyway. That's the second season, all wrapped up, all complete. Arsenal are Champions League winners. They also won the Carabao Cup and the Community Shield. They won three trophies in the second season. They won one in the first season. How much? or how many, sorry, can they win in the third season? So we're gonna go to the third season, have a look at some of the transfers, and then of course, lastly, look at the results. Let's go to the third season. So here we are, season three, and here are some signings. You may have noticed that I've made four signings instead of three, but that's because smart ass Matthias Oliveira actually wanted to leave us. I don't think he played enough games in the first season. So instead of actually keeping an unhappy player, I decided to shift him on and quickly sign a replacement left back. We made four signings. We spent £79 million. Number one is Yuri Tillemans. Actually, I'll show you why. 
some of you actually may have spotted it but Leicester City got relegated to the championship and I thought wow let's make some signings at first I was going to get Yuri Tillemans, James Madison and Patson Dakar all as our three signings but I thought you know what that's just a bit much but Leicester City got relegated absolutely crazy so Yuri Tillemans was our first signing for 35 million pound which is fairly a bargain especially now we're in 2022 his physical attributes aren't the greatest but he's got fantastic mental attributes as well and he's got decent technical attributes he's technically very sound he's got good passing good technique good first touch and excellent vision we're kind of stacked up with some playmakers we have Yuri Tillemans we have Gonzalo Villa and Thomas Partey probably not a playmaker but he can do a job playmaking he's got three stars as current ability which can potentially rise to four stars our second signing was Thiago Almada Football manager fans absolutely love him. No wonder why he's a fantastic talent, very skillful on the ball, he's fairly determined and he's an attacking midfielder who can play on the left side as well as the right side if needed he can play in central midfield and if absolutely needed he can play up top we snapped him up for cheap for nine million pound we also signed omar richards like i said as a backup left back because our other backup left back decided to leave so we quickly snapped him up from brentford we tried to sign him before Matthias Oliveira. actually we tried to sign him but he chose brentford over arsenal confusing probably they were giving him first team football and we couldn't offer that so Brentford snapped him up for 6.75 million then sold him for 29 million pounds to us it doesn't matter the price isn't what we really want to care about we want to care about the results and if this guy can bring in some good performances he looks like he can especially as a backup left back so I decided to get him <laughs> our last signing was Ilias from Barcelona a 19 or 18 year old sorry valued at 9 million he was on the transfer list I was looking for an attacking player he was on the transfer list for 5.5 million pound how can you not try and snap him up he tries tricks he's got very good agility decent balance as well so he can dribble without always going to the floor he's got good flair and good dribbling good first touch good technique if he likes to try tricks he can try it because he doesn't have the worst decision making either he likes to run with the ball and he cuts inside from the right wing so he is Ilias I don't know how to say his surname so I'm not even going to pronounce he now plays for Arsenal adding to our attacking midfield area who did we sell though we sold Nicolas Pepe to Shakhtar Donetsk for around 18.5 million pound we sold Edu's son as well he's just not good enough we had to get rid we sold Alexandre Lacazette to AC Milan for 12.5 million pound which is a very good deal I believe he's now 31 million pound and we got those heavy wages off the bill we sold Matthias Oliveira to Lazio for 12.5 million pound we loaned out Balogun again as well as well as James Hilson whoever that is let's look at the squad that we're going to be going into the third season with I also promoted some youth players as well from the under 18s of course we got some new gens I don't know if they're going to be any good I don't know if the assistant's even going to use them when we simulate but I decided let me just promote them anyway so welcome Elan Wilson a well at the centre back he can play defensive midfield and right back we have Alex Norris as well a winger that can play up front hopefully our next Aubameyang hopefully maybe I'm wishing here next we have Linton Chaplin a centre back and right back as well very good in the air he's got good bravery he's got good jumping reach not the best heading but it doesn't matter and he's six foot one we also have Brooke Norton Cuffey a backup right back he looks a decent player to be fair he isn't too slow he's got 40 in acceleration 13 pace so it's decent he's got very good determination and lastly we have this Mexican Marcelo Flores he's an attacking player decent pace decent flair decent dribbling he looks like a promising striker as the media describes him so in goal we have Ronison and Leno, in central defence we have Gabriel, Holden, White, Saliba, Chaplin and Wilson. We also have Bellerin, Menino, Maitland-Niles, Omar Richards, 
Kieran Tierney and Norton Coffey as our fullbacks. For our attacking players, we have Saka, we have Almada, Joe Willock, Martinelli, Hossam Awa, Ilias, Emil Smith Rowe, Aubameyang, Alex Norris, and Brenner. And then lastly, in midfield, for the very last season of this Arsenal rebuild, we have Yuri Tillersman. Albert Sambi Lokonga, Thomas Partey, Gonzalo Villa, as well as Joe Willock, if I haven't mentioned him already. We're going to simulate the very last season, season three. We're going to simulate how well Arsenal can do. They've already won four trophies. They won the Premier League season one. Season two, they won the Champions League and the Carabao Cup as well as the Community Shield. If you want to count that as a trophy, what can they win in the third season? Let's simulate and find out. So here we are, the very last season, Arsenal have dropped down the table by one place once again. Now Arsenal have finished third with 82 points, I believe the points are dropping as well. For the top goal scorer though, we have Brenner on 34 goals, a fantastic striker, let's look at him. He has been an absolutely fantastic signing, he's also developed very well, 23 years of age now but he's now valued at £58 million earning £135,000 a week. How many goals exactly has he scored for Arsenal throughout his career? In the first season he came with us, he played 33, scoring 26 goals in the Premier League. The second season he played with us, he played 33 games again, this time scoring 18 goals in the Premier League. Arsenal scored 83 goals in the Premier League, conceding 28. Not bad whatsoever, but it just was not enough for us in the Premier League. We won 26 games, we drew 4, but this time we lost 8. Maybe the opponents are starting to suss us out but a lot of them came away as well. At home we lost to Liverpool but away we lost to Manchester City, Tottenham, Villa, Stoke, Leeds, Liverpool and Manchester United. Some of those teams we are expecting to beat. So the top goal scorers Brenner finished fifth this time with 18. Thiago Almada reached the top eight as well with 16 for the most assist. Hossam Awa finally finishing on top of that list. For the most key passes, Messi, who's still playing football at the age of 35, still playing football at the top of his game. He completed the most key passes, but we can see Hossam Awa there in second place and Almada in sixth. In the Champions League, this time we got knocked out in the first round by Juve. We didn't even get past the first knockout round. Probably second season syndrome in the Champions League, if that's a thing. However, we did win the UEFA Super Cup and we won the Carabao Cup for the second time in a row and the FA Cup, we didn't win that cup. We got knocked out in the fifth round by Aston Vanilla. Yes, I called them Vanilla on purpose, that was not a mistake. So, second season, we ended with two trophies, again, not so bad. Arsenal are now a competitive side, they are now winning trophies as well, so we have actually set up Arsenal for a very good future. Let's look at their squad at the end of the third season. If we look at some of the selection info, the top goal scorer in the third season is Brenner with 34 goals in 50 starts. Thiago Almada scored 24 goals in all competition. Hossam Alwa scored 14 and Mill Smith Rowe scored 13. For the most assists, we have Hossam Awa on 19, Gonzalo Villa on 14, Bakayo Saka on 13, Gabriel Menino on 11, and the new signing Yuri Tillersman on 11. So we can look at some of the new signings. How well did they do? Yuri Tillersman, he played 40 games in all competitions or started 40 games, sorry. He scored four goals, getting 11 assists, an average rating of 6.94, which on Football Manager, I believe that's good. I'm not sure or I believe is above average. Either way, he performed fairly well. We also signed Omar Richards for the last season. He only started 13 games, however, getting a 7.19 average rating and his value has gone up as well. So nice to know that we haven't really lost money on him. We spent 29 million pound, which is a lot, but now his value is at 32.5 million pound. If Arsenal sell, hopefully they can get around his value or more. We did sign Ilias as well, an exciting prospect, but he didn't play much. The assistant manager didn't really choose him, but his value did grow, however, to £15 million. If Arsenal choose to sell him, they would have made a profit. 
Lastly, we can look at Thiago Almada, probably the best player that we signed this season in our last and final season at Arsenal. He started 30 games scoring 24 goals so he played very very good. He got 7 assists and a high average rating in all competitions of 7.35. Only £9 million and he's now valued at £46 million. But here we are at the very end of this video, the very end of the Arsenal rebuild. Let's look at Emil Smith Rowe as well and hopeful Arsenal talent. Now only three stars, he's potentially four stars, but we can see he's got lots of greens there, a few 16s, a couple 18s. Bakayo Saka, a very good player. He's had a very decent season, I would say. He got 11 assists, which I thought was decent, but his average rating is on 6.83. So maybe he was wasteful with the ball. I'm not entirely show why that average rating is not exactly higher but he scored nine goals 11 assists not the worst return for a 21 year old unfortunately though oh also ben white i know a lot of arsenal fans want to see ben white he's now valued at 55 million pound he too was a good sign and it looks he has a decent average rating for a defender 7.03 which i find is decent for a defender but the first season he got 7.07 second season he got 7.17 and then in the last he got 7.6 so he's been a very good signing for arsenal arsenal fans you have nothing to worry about but unfortunately that wraps up this video i hope you guys have enjoyed it this was a request on patreon a few people have done this before like hood gaming and like omega luke they have some fantastic rebuilds make sure you check their channels out as well but my name is rdf this is my channel and if you enjoy this content make sure you are subscribed make sure you like the video make sure you share it as well let's get everybody watching let's get everybody watching i hope you enjoyed it i will speak to you soon let me know in the comments as well if you want to see more and i will speak to you soon peace out stay safe